Cancer, heart disease, and diabetes all run in families. You know what else runs in families? Well, I used to say recipes, but nobody cooks anymore, so I'm gonna say lifestyle. Hey, I'm Dr. Patty Bartch. I'm a traditional naturopath, founder and owner of Naturally Unbridled Wellness and NaturallyUnbridled.com, where we focus on wellness solutions, not disease management. This is Down the Ridge with Dr. Patty, where I give you seven to 10 minutes of holistic life and wellness information on my way to work. This is not medical advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. Don't listen to me. Nothing I say is true. The topic of today's video is epigenetics. Um, epigenetics is about gene expression. So let me, let me put it to you this way. You're watching a television show or a movie and the, there's been a murder and the detectives are going in and they're looking for DNA. Now, sometimes they're getting blood, but other times they're getting skin or hair or semen. And that even though those are all different types of cells, they can get DNA from that and it will show you who the person is. So the reason is every single cell in your body has identical DNA, but certain genes are turned on or off in different cells and that's called gene expression. So an eye cell looks like an eye cell and not like a blood cell or a tooth cell, okay? Um, so when it comes to um, genetic um, predisposition to a disease and the really like common ones are like the breast cancer genes like the BRCA1 and 2 and the HER2 right so people will freak out because they get a test done that says that oh you have the gene for breast cancer which I want to strangle the people who tell them that right because they don't ever tell them about epigenetics. So having the, the gene is one thing. Turning the gene on is another thing. There's a really great book by Dr. Bruce Lipton and it's called The Biology of Belief. And Dr. Bruce Lipton is a PhD and a cell biologist, and he made an observation that every single one of us who has done mammalian cell culture um, has made the same observation, but he just kind of really thought about it and wrote a book about it. And what he noticed was we could change the expression of the cells by changing the environment that the cells were in, and that's called the growth media, or medium, okay? So we knew this in tissue culture because we would grow what are called fibroblasts. Fibroblasts are cells that can, they basically haven't differentiated. They haven't decided what they are yet. So if you take fibroblasts and you put them in cell culture with heart cells, they will turn into heart cells and they'll actually contract. It's really cool to see under the microscope. Um, and because the heart cells are expressing certain genes and the other cells in the same environment are you know, turning on the same genes. But you can add or remove certain components to the medium, the environment, and you can completely change or significantly change the gene expression. So, where does that take us as human organisms? Well, we're in an environment, right? So of course there are things that we have a hard time controlling in the environment, like what's in the air as far as pollution or um, you know the chemicals that are used. Like we live in a highly agricultural area and there's a lot of agricultural chemicals used, fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, etc. Um, I'm right now I'm driving by the apple orchard that's at the bottom of the ridge that I live on and um, when I was when I first moved here there'd be a couple times a year where I drive up the road and I'm like wow smell the apple blossoms 
Then I realized it wasn't apple blossoms. It was freaking pesticides that they were spraying that kind of has a little bit of a floral fragrance to it. And I'm like, ah, crap, close the vents, close the windows, right? Try not to breathe. So anyway, there are some things, oh, if you're wondering why I'm going slow, the very common thing in this area is for people to drive like little uh, UTVs uh, on the road. <laughs> and so there's a Lexus in front of me and there's a UTV in front of them and they probably work at the orchard. Um, so anyway, it gives you a couple extra minutes with me, I guess. Um, okay, so there are things we can't control very much in the environment, but there are things we can control. And the number one thing we can control is what we put in our mouth. <laughs> and so if you are like circling back to the beginning of this, like cancer, heart disease, and diabetes run in families, so do lifestyles. Um, you know, if you grew up on pizza bites and um, corn dogs and all the, like your grocery cart is basically stuff in boxes that's ready to eat with a little bit of preparation, um, then you're creating a very toxic environment in your body, you're creating a lot of inflammation, you're distressing the immune system whose job it is to patrol for rogue cells that have started reproducing out of control and can become tumors, right? Like, the, creating that kind of environment will absolutely activate those genes. But there's an analogy, and I screw this one up, but it's along the lines of the environment is the gun. No. <laughs> Shoot, I never get this. But there's a gun and a trigger thing, and, and the trigger is like what you put in your mouth. So it must be the genes or the gun, and the environment is the trigger. In any event, um, what I hate about when people are told that they have um, a gene for this or that disease is there, there is a placebo effect one way or the other. Um, there's some really great research on placebos actually. It's freaking phenomenal about the power of the mind. But anyway, um, when people are told that they have a genetic disease, but they're not told that their environment will control whether or not those genes turned on. And the other thing they say, oh, you're positive for BRCA1. Let's do a prophylactic double mastectomy and complete hysterectomy so that you don't get cancer of the breast or uterus or ovaries. That's healthcare. Are you kidding me? Oh, this happens all the time. There, I mean, I, I know a woman that she and her whole freaking family found some specialist doctor down south and they all went down there for their mastectomies and hysterectomies for a prophylactic. Um, you know, no talk about like controlling the environment and eating a like healthy diet and exercising and not manifesting because you put it in your head that you have a genetic... Um, basically a genetic prescription for cancer, right? Um, it does not have to be that way. I really encourage anybody who, and I've had clients who come into me because they're super freaked out because they, they got a genetic test back or someone in their family got a test back that they um, have this genetic mutation and they like are trying to decide what to do to their body. So please, if that's your situation, the book again is called The Biology of Belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton. Um, and it's it's got to be like a 20 year old book now and maybe has been revised and updated. He still does a lot of speaking engagements and that sort of thing. But um, it's really like it was kind of fun as a scientist to read it. But I think that it can also offer some peace of mind that you actually have more control than they let you think about what happens in your body and whether or not those genes are expressed. Okay? So that's epigenetics for you. Peace out, peeps. Have a healthy day.